What is up guys and welcome back to episode number 52 now of the Leeds United career mode. We kick this episode off with a EFL Cup game up against Chelsea. You can see the side on your screen right there. It's pretty much our backup side. I think there's only Joel Green in there that would be able to get in the first team. But as I mentioned last episode, he's actually been dropped at the moment due to bad form. So I'm hoping he can sort of pick up his form playing in the Cup for us and it'll give him a nice bit of a, bit, bit of a break from the side. Because as I said to you as well, he's actually only 19 and we keep forgetting the fact that he's actually so young. And we did actually play him for the majority of pretty much every single game he's played pretty much at the club. So I thought he deserved a little bit of a break. So I gave him the break, allowed him to get back his form and hopefully he's going to come back even better than what he is. So... Fingers crossed, though, we can do a job on Chelsea here. We've still got, in my opinion, a strong enough squad to be able to compete with Chelsea. We did obviously beat them a couple of episodes ago, 2-0 in the Premier League. So there is that there that we do have at our disposal. We have actually got a strong bench as well. You'll see the sides pop up on your screen in a second. That's the Chelsea side. They have a Kante, Icardi, a Fabregas on the bench, I do believe. But they've still got a very you know strong squad, uh, side out there with Hesse, Rodriguez, Batshuayi and Hazard making up the front three. So at the moment in time, there's no reason as to why they won't be able to beat us. But at the same time, I still feel confident that we can do a job over there and um, them as well. So you can see our, our backup lineup there. Um, I think we've got Origi on the bench along with uh, Emre. Ray Moore. So I still believe we've got a strong enough bench if we need to call on reinforcements, but I don't think we'll have to do it. I think Remy and uh, Kamaru for the two uh, players we actually named up front for ourselves today. And it was Chelsea who had the first chance on goal. Seven minutes into this one, Matic, a lovely... <laughs> it's just so frustrating. It gets so annoying when they do that, the AI. I can't tackle him. He has an effort which comes back off the post. And it, it, honestly, that was a, one of the... You know, he deserved to go in, in my opinion. But 41 minutes in, take a look at how well this goal was worked. And Kamaru into the path of Remy against his former club, like Remy, gets us off to the perfect start. It took us 42 minutes before we created a chance, but the chance we did create was that in fact golden, and I couldn't believe it. It actually ended up going in the back of the net, but I have to say the ball from Awobi and then the uh, touchdown from Kamaru into the penalty area for Remy to get onto. I personally thought that, that was one of the better goals we've created in this series in terms of passing. It was just so slick. Um... There was only three passes involved in the actual, like, making of the goal. And to be able to get it into that position and put the ball in the back of the net, I was very, very happy with that. And into the second half now, Joel Green whips in a corner, comes down here to, I think it was Ronaldo Vieira, cuts inside, gets the strike away. He was actually probably going wide, but Begovic just made sure by saving it out for a corner, but nothing came of it. And into the 55th minute, Chelsea had another good chance to get themselves back into this one as Oscar it sort of found its way to Batshuayi, but Oscar was involved with Hesse Rodriguez and an absolute thunderbolt of a shot from Oscar in all honesty, was then palmed away by Silvestri. And I thought that was an extremely good save by our backup goalkeeper. He doesn't really feature all that much, so to come up with a save like that, I was very, very happy with our goalkeeper. But in the 83rd minute, David Luiz does win it back, but Joel Green doesn't give it up that easily. He cuts inside here to, uh, I do believe, uh, Kamaru. Kamaru into Ronaldo Vieira. So much time and space to pick out a spot in, in between the sticks. But unfortunately, he could only send his effort wide of that post. I genuinely thought he bagged that top bins there. I was looking at that and thinking, oh my word, what a strike. But then I realised it was probably just going wide at the time. Very unfortunate to not find the back of the net, but it didn't matter ultimately. We won the game by a goal to nil. So, for the second time this season, we have defeated Chelsea over at Stamford Bridge. And in all honesty, they put up a better showing in the EFL Cup than they did in that Premier League game. They probably deserve to get something out of this. They had two big chances in the game. And this could have gone either way, in my opinion. And uh, you look at both, well, you look at the save that Sylvester made and the fact that they hit the post earlier on. Could have been a much different game. And the fact that the goal we scored was so well worked and crafted by ourselves, I was extremely happy with that result. Especially when you look at the fact that we had a weaker side than what I would have probably named in the Premier League had that I'd been a Premier League game against them. So again, I'm happy to get through in the Cup. And it's the only Cup we are yet to win in terms of English Continental Cup. Obviously, the Prem title as well is still there for us. But out of the two Cups that we've won, or the two Cups we've played in, the FA Cup we won in our first season, we have yet to win the EFA. Cup. So, we're on a good run at the moment. Can we do it in this season is the question. But I don't want to try and win it in this one and then hinder our Premier League performance. So what I want to try and do is I want to try and play that backup side for as long as I possibly can hopefully until we reach the final, maybe even in the final, depending on who we get, because I think there's only one other big team in uh, the knockout phases of that EFL Cup, and if that is the case, I feel as though we can actually win it in this season. We are looking at it and thinking to ourselves, it's, our, it's our, you know the only cup that we've got left to win out of the two, and if I can win it in this season, great, I will try and get my hands on it at some point before we end the series off, obviously, because I'm hoping this will go to actually above 100 episodes. We are obviously on 52, we did hit a half a century a few episodes ago, well two episodes ago now, um, so I want to say my props as well for you guys still showing the spot you are on the series. Thank you all so much for that. I was going to do a special sort of episode, but I thought, why not save it until the 100th episode? And then I'll do a, a, like a, a longer episode-ish type thing. So I didn't want to do it in episode 50. And um, the reason for that is literally because I never make it to episode 50 in any series I've done. So to make it to episode 50 now, I am so proud of myself. Well, I'm so happy with myself. But ultimately, you guys are the ones that have made this series carry on until this so far in. So mad props to you guys. 
Give yourselves a pat on the back. And also, if you could like the video, that would be absolutely incredible. So thank you all so much for the spot you're showing on the channel and on this uh, series that we are doing here. But we did take on Middlesbrough for the second game of today's episode. You can see our side there. Back to the strongest Premier League, oh, strongest lineup. Our Premier League team is what I meant to say. You can see it's pretty much the uh, best side that I've got currently at Leeds United in terms of rating. Sacco still in the side ahead of Joel Green. Like I mentioned, through poor form, nothing else um, to do with that. Not because like, obviously I think that Sacco is a better player. It's just at the moment, um, Green's in poor form, and I think Sacco just brings. It's weird. Sacco brings something. I know his stats aren't that great, but he's, he, when I write a play with Sacco, I just feel as though he always brings something to the table. It's a bit of like mystery there, and he was actually Sacco who caused the early part of uh, the uh, the mystery of Rabba. What's the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He actually caused them danger earlier on. That's the word. Uh, as Middlesbrough ended up sort of giving him way too much time. I took the strike on with him, but unfortunately ended up basically hitting it straight at the goalkeeper, and I should have actually done better with it. 17 minutes in, Eriksson from a, a similar position to that he banged one in against Leicester was so close to making a score one nil as well, but it was ultimately. Middlesbrough who would find the first goal in this one pretty much straight from that they nod the ball down poor defender from me I have to say it's one through ball that just cuts me open and I'm sick and tired of losing it to one through ball it's a great through ball nonetheless and Gaston Ramirez credit to him as well an absolute rifle into that bottom corner but we found ourselves a goal down and it was literally two passes that caused us that issue and I'm not happy defensively to concede a goal like that especially when you look at it I don't know if you saw at the start of this uh, game basically they said Middlesbrough were the lowest scoring team in the division and we were the least con uh, goals conceded in the division so by that start we shouldn't be conceding here. And the fact that we conceded literally 20 minutes in through that, I wasn't happy. But 28 minutes into the game, it could have got even worse for us. As Gaston Ramirez involved again, lovely intricate passing, I have to say. Middlesbrough definitely deserved this to go in the back of the net for that passing ability and play. But Clayton sent his effort miles over the bar. But 51 minutes in, we did in fact get ourselves back on level terms. Emre Moore came off the bench for ourselves, I think in the... Oh, maybe he started the game, I can't quite remember. Divock Origi on the ball, gets his first Leeds United goal in our shirt. So... Thirty-two and a half million pounds paid, and he's finally got off the mark here at Ellen Road. Basically, I was waiting for this to happen. I was so waiting, and I'm so glad that finally Divock Origi has got himself his first goal. And hopefully, that's a better sign of things to come. Hopefully, he can kick on and get even more for us here at Ellen Road. You guys suggested him. It was Mercato who suggested him ultimately, and uh, I was a bit sort of sceptical after signing him and hadn't seen how he's played. But I suppose. Every player when they come into a new club always has a bad run of form. I think, I mean, look at Fernando Torres. He cost Chelsea £50 million. And was he even that great up until maybe season two? Probably not. And he wasn't even that great overall. I just remember that um, goal he scored in the Champions League where bloody Gary Neville went absolutely mental. Um, and I still, to this day, that is the greatest like reaction to a goal I've ever seen. Or, well, not the greatest reaction, because um, there's obviously many, many more I've seen. But, I mean, live... Um, in terms of that one, because obviously as well, there's the Aguero one from Martin Tyler, um, but yeah, it just was so funny when Gary Neville did that when Torres scored in the Champions League game, but it's one of those things, but Anwar El Ghazi, take a bow, son, as he fires that bottom corner to give us the lead in this game against Middlesbrough, absolutely wonderful strike from the number 10, you guys know how much I love this guy already in this series, he's just a monster for us, bangs him in left, right and centre, and the fact that we now back on, uh, well, I was about to say back on level terms, we're actually winning the game now by two goals to one, and it's through an um, Divock Origi equaliser and then an El Ghazi winning goal, possibly, if we can hold on to this. And it actually took us into the 76th minute when Emre Moore actually got into an extremely... And the thing is, guys, this guy's so fast that it actually doesn't even, like, look like that's not even, like, weird. It's, it just looked weird that that happened. But I have to say, he's actually extremely quick and he's got, like, 90 pace or something ridiculous like that. And when I got into the position, it was from... I actually forgot to show you. It was from a Middlesbrough corner. So they didn't have... They actually brought too many men upfield and left Emre Moore on his own, pretty much. And that's the only reason that ball ended up in the back of the net. I know it sort of looked a bit weird, the fact that Middlesbrough didn't have any defenders back. But the only reason for that was, like I said, it was from their corner. But for some reason, I don't actually show you that corner. I think that it was, like, the poorest corner I've ever seen in my life. Into the 82nd minute now, and as you can see... Was chance to get one more in the game. Emre Moore was his provider for the last goal and he put it into Ericsson. Gets himself on the score sheet here. Leeds United 4, Middlesbrough 1 on the day. An absolute goal route in this one. And uh, yeah, it's just one of those things. I mean, it's like weird because we went a goal down in this one. And when I went a goal down, I couldn't believe it. I was like, what on earth am I playing at? And it was, you know, it is one of those things. I mean, if it sort of goes, it could go either way. Like literally, when Middlesbrough put that ball in the back of the day, if they'd have got that second goal, I think I would have been out of this game. I genuinely think that they would have gone on to win and get the three points out of this. But the fact that we didn't concede that second goal and then uh, obviously we get ourselves back into it, we scored four second half goals to give us the victory today. It was a very, very commanding performance for me. I have to say as well, there was a number of players who actually stepped up as soon as we went 1-0 down and actually played their hand back in getting us into level terms. And while being one of them, but Divock Origi as well on the score sheet today. So... Swansea Thankfully, City. he has finally got himself Leeds a goal United. for us Four. here at Leeds United. And I couldn't quite 
believe the fact that we went 1-0 down and came back to win that one by four goals to one. It's pretty crazy in all honesty. But you see there, a bit of training done to Emre Moore. And I do believe the Chinese goalkeeper that we're still training up to be our backup goalkeeper when Silvestri does, in fact, leave the club. I'm not intending to sign a goalkeeper currently here at Leeds. Um, and at the moment, my thought process is if we train him up enough, this uh, Chinese goalkeeper, he can be our backup. And uh, maybe even if he hits the highest overall possible, we'll even throw him into the uh, first team and try him out. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But you can see the detail on the bottom right hand of your screen. Exactly the same game played as Spurs, but we are two points behind them at the moment. We had this game up here against West Ham at the London Stadium. Um, we went on to take on Slavan Bilic's men. It was going to be interesting because West Ham, for me, are either really good... Or they have a shocker. Like, the, the times I've played them in FIFA, it's weird. They either do extremely well, or they have an absolute shocking display. And it, it's one of those things. I mean, it's like Palace. I don't know if you saw Palace earlier on in, in this season. Last season, they dominated us. This season, they just rolled over and let us just walk them over. And it's a similar type of thing that I have against West Ham. They either dominate me, or they just let me walk over them. And you can see the table there in more detail. If you wanted to pause it there, you can see what it is. I, sh I know I understand, I understand that I sort of speed this up, but it's literally to get you through this early bit because I don't want to be sat there talking for a minute and a half and have a minute and a half of you guys watching the two teams come out because that would be fairly pointless in all honesty. But you could have seen it. And if you wanted to check it out in any more detail, all the teams, literally pause the video and you better get yourselves a, a more sort of in-depth look at these uh, the teams. Dimi Payet was, in fact, in the West Ham lineup. That was our lineup, though, going into this one. Joel Green back in the side today for a Premier League game. So he did obviously have himself the uh, the good performances in the Cup. So I decided to throw him back in as well due to the fact that Saka would have been a bit unfit for this one. He wouldn't have been on full fitness. So I decided Joel Green, this was the time for him to come back in the lineup today. And it took 14 minutes into this one for us to get the opening goal in this. And while El Ghazi fired a ball, in all honesty, into the path of Origi, Brought it down absolutely brilliantly, and the uh, the young forward went up and scored the opening goal in this one. So, like I mentioned, he got the first goal for the club last episode, and he's already opened up his uh, scoring in this one. So, two and two at the moment for him. Obviously, it's not his uh, overall stats, because um, he did, in fact, obviously play a few games before this one. But, a very, very good control, I have to say, because Anwar fired that pass extremely fast into him. So, to actually bring that under control and then get through and be able to take the strike on was mad props to Divock Origi there, because I expected that to actually out of play. And I didn't actually mean to put as much pace on the pass as I did. But in the end, it worked out, and we went 1-0 up in this game. And I have to say, I did mention it. It either seems to be at the moment West Ham either roll over and let me just walk over them, or they just outplay me out of the park and it's just such a difficult game. But in 38 minutes, I was already cruising in this one. Divo Carigi almost had a second for himself and it was a very good start by Randolph in the West Ham United goal. That meant we didn't have it. But we have an early contender for goal of this series and it's basically, this is just next level. Like, watch this from Christian Eriksen. I had one thing in my mind when I got this ball back with him and that was to strike it. Now you can say, yes, Randolph, does he do enough to try and save this? But I just want to show you it from one angle, man. This is, looks absolutely incredible from another angle. I have to say, when I scored this goal, right, I looked at that and I thought, when the ball came to me back, I'm going to sort of like talk you for it. When Ericsson got the ball back here, one thing in my mind was to take the shot on and try and curl it top bins. And we did it. And I was sort of thinking to myself, is that Randolph being bad? But then watch it from this angle. It's just absolutely incredible. It curls all the way back in. Look at this. Absolutely wonderful curl on the ball. And yes, Randolph probably should do a little bit better. He does look like he's tried to reach it. And he does look like he's reached as far as he possibly can. But to bang that top bins from that distance with Ericsson, that is a contender for goal of the series. And that's definitely up there with the better goals I've scored this series so far. Into the 57th minute and West Ham finally created their first chance of the game. Although it was offside, in fact, as uh, they did send through. And Valencia sent his effort wide of the post. As you can see, though, it was offside. And it meant that, obviously, West Ham and Slavon Bilic's men were unable to really test me this game. Like I said, they either roll over and let me just outplay them or they outplay me. And that's the way it seems to be going against West Ham recently. But 74 minutes into this one, we got ourselves a corner kick from Randolph's good save. Whip the corner in. It's uh, out, actually out to the edge of the area where Don, uh, Den Donker is waiting. It falls to Gel Gazi in the box, who actually didn't even control for that one. The computer actually smashed that ball back to the net. But he was, in fact, offside and it meant that it wasn't going to count towards our goal tally for the game. So a bit unfortunate there, but it wasn't enough because uh, basically straight after that, again, West Ham committing men forward much like Middlesbrough did in the last game once they found themselves a goal be or behind in the game. We sent through Divock Origi, who actually knocks it in front of him into his path and dinks Randolph with an absolutely audacious chip there over the oncoming West Ham United goalkeeper and actually makes it West Ham United 3, uh, West Ham United nil rather, Leeds United 3. And Origi gets himself 2 on the day, making it 3 goals in 2 games during this episode. Very, very thankful that finally he's got himself off, uh, well, he's got himself his first goal on the score sheet and got himself his first goal at Ellen Road for ourselves. So, Fingers crossed, 
This is a sign of better things to come for Origi, and maybe he'll become an absolute monster for us. Who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. But there was time for one more goal in the game as we stole the ball back off them. And again, they're just sending too many men forward at this point. They just can't quite contain me. Origi into Ericsson. Ericsson, I do believe, sends it one more to Anwar. Anwar just curls his back of the net past Randolph. It's so, so easy. Once the computer, uh, even if it is legendary, send that many players up, up the pitch because they're obviously losing the game, they have to do something to try and change it, it becomes so, so easy because you just have like a free on one and provided you can defend against them and provided that you know sort of how to exploit it, it becomes so easy. Whereas when you're playing online, this is the difference for me, when you're playing online, people defend so weirdly, man, it's weird. It's like, at least with the AI, you know the way that they're sort of going to defend, but when you play online, people just defend like properly weird, it's crazy, man, but... We did, in fact, win that game by four goals to nil. A very good performance on the day and a very good performance throughout the entirety of this episode by getting three wins and also advancing to the next round of the EFL Cup. So I couldn't be happy with that one. Um, and it's a very, very good episode in terms of Origi's personal performance because he did get his first three goals for the club. Very happy with that one. So, McCattle, he's got off to the mark for you, my friend, and that's very good to see. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Career Mode. If you have enjoyed, smash that like button. Again, thank you all so much for the spot you're showing on the series. I mention this every single episode, but it's just absolutely crazy. I have been Danny. I hope you've enjoyed, and I am out. Adios.